China to abandon U.S. semiconductors by 2027, full decoupling from America. Why does China dare to cut off chip supply to the U.S.? Why has its self-sufficiency rate surpassed Europe and the U.S.? In 2027, China may completely decouple from the U.S. When this news exploded like a thunderclap across the global semiconductor industry, many Western media outlets, with their habitual arrogance, sneered, China's semiconductor industry will abandon the U.S.? This sounds like a pipe dream. A look back at history reveals painful memories. In 2018, ZT suffered a shock therapy from the U.S. chip supply cutoff, and its operations almost came to a standstill. In 2019, Huawei was placed on the entity list, forcing the discontinuation of its high-end current chips. At that time, more than 90% of China's high-end chips were imported from the U.S. NVIDIA's A100 and H100 GPUs were the lifeline, coveted by global AI companies. Holding these chips meant controlling the discourse on AI computing power. However, in just a few years, China's semiconductor industry has staged a miraculous comeback. Beijing was the first to propose a strategic goal of 100% self-sufficiency in integrated circuits. Relying on the innovation ecosystem of Zhongguancan Science City, it has built a full-chain system from basic material R&D to high-end chip design, achieving a breakthrough in the field of domestic CPU instruction set architecture. Shanghai, relying on Zhajiang Science City, has created the Oriental Core Harbor Industrial Cluster. Through a bidding and ranking mechanism, it integrated over 30 key enterprises, leading to the birth of the first domestic AI chip supporting a 5 nanometers process in the design phase, mass production of the 14 nanometers process in the manufacturing phase, and the establishment of internationally leading wafer-level packaging standards in the packaging and testing phase, with a plan to achieve 70% domestic self-sufficiency. Giang leveraging its China's Data Valley Computing Power Advantage built the national Guizhou hub node for an integrated computing network. Driven by data center demand, it has established a joint laboratory with domestic chip companies and announced a goal of 90% coverage of domestic chip applications by 2027. How did this seemingly impossible breakout battle go from blueprint to reality? In reality, the semiconductor supply chain is like a precise and complex technological food chain. Over the past few decades, under the Global Industrial Division of Labor, the U.S. has firmly occupied the top position by leveraging its technical patent barriers and ecosystem dominance. From the monopoly of ARM architecture licenses and chip design to the control of core technologies for lithography and etching machines and semiconductor manufacturing equipment and the choke point, tools of EDA design software, Chinese companies have long been squeezed into the low-profit downstream assembly links, like herbivores grazing on sparse grass. In the field of AI chips, for example, NVIDIA's A100 and H100 series chips are the wagged beef of the semiconductor industry. With their trillions of calculations per second, they have become the standard for training global AI large models. Even if Chinese companies pay up to hundreds of thousands of dollars per card, they still face the risk of supply disruption due to export controls. Today, China's semiconductor industry is launching a chain-building revolution from the bottom up. Huawei's high silicon, which has invested hundreds of billions in R&D over eight years, has created the Ascend series of chips, like a digital pasture built in a technological wasteland. From the breakthrough of the Kirin 9000S's 7 nanometers process to the Ascend 910B's ability to support thousands of cards in a cluster, this independent and controllable technical path is reshaping the industrial ecosystem. Although domestic chips still lag behind international top-tier products in terms of energy efficiency and yield, like young cattle with slightly less tender meat, they can already support digital banquets such as the Pangu and Purple Initial AI models through collaborative efforts from platforms like Pengcheng Lab, enabling Chinese AI companies to completely escape the predicament of being unable to cook without rice. What's even more noteworthy is that this domestic supply chain is forming a complete closed loop from chip design to wafer fabrication and packaging, like nurturing a complete industry chain from growing grass and raising livestock to slaughtering and processing 
bringing new ecological variables to the global semiconductor industry. What's even more revolutionary is that China not only wants to eat its own vegetables, but also wants to make the farm a world leader. The U.S. spent a huge $38 billion on the Chips and Science Act to try and reshape the semiconductor industry landscape, but it has had little effect in the field of cutting-edge logic chips. As of the end of 2024, its chip production capacity for 3 nanometers processes and below remains almost zero. In contrast, since the release of the National Integrated Circuit Industry Development Promotion Outline, through the collaborative efforts of local government-led funds and corporate R&D, China's semiconductor industry has shown explosive growth. In 2014, China's semiconductor self-sufficiency rate was only 14%, less than half of the global average. By 2023, this figure had climbed to 23%, achieving key breakthroughs in areas such as memory chips and mature process logic chips. Among them, Yangtze Memory Technologies' mass production of 64-layer 3D NAND flash memory broke the foreign monopoly, and SMIC's 14 nanometers process yield exceeded 95%, both of which are milestone achievements. This great change in the global chip industry is no accident. It is the global chip industry landscape is undergoing a massive change. The once-dominant era of the US M7, seven major chip giants like Intel, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA, is fading, while China's T10, 10 domestic enterprises like SMIC and Huawei High Silicon, are rising. A recent report from the U.S. Department of Commerce shows that despite the Chips and Science Act investing $33 billion, the U.S. global share of cutting-edge logic chip production capacity is still zero, completely dependent on East Asian manufacturing. Meanwhile, in China, Beijing plans to achieve 100% self-sufficiency in AI chips by 2027, and Shanghai and Guiyang have set goals of 70% and 90%, respectively. This contrast is simply unbelievable. The path to semiconductor independence for European and American countries is a case of The ideal is full, but the reality is bony. The US has a goal of producing 20% of the world's cutting-edge logic chips by 2030 but TSMC's factory in Arizona has just begun mass production, which is still a long way from the goal. The EU's CHIPS Act has also been progressing slowly, without even a clear production capacity target. In contrast, China's semiconductor self-sufficiency rate reached 23% in 2023. Although there is still a gap from the high goals of local governments, it is steadily increasing every year. The difference in execution is obvious. China's journey towards semiconductor independence has not been smooth. The company DeepSeek stumbled when it tried to use Huawei's SN 910B chip to train a new AI model, and had to postpone the release due to software and hardware compatibility issues. This shows that although domestic chips have a theoretical performance close to international levels, there are still many, minor problems, that need to be solved in practical applications. However, ByteDance is already considering using Huawei's products, indicating that companies are willing to pay for domestic technology, and this market support is a catalyst for technological progress. Japan's semiconductor revival plan serves as a wake-up call for China. Although the Japanese company Rapidus has produced a trial 2 nanometers chip, it faces a funding gap of 5 trillion yen and cannot find stable customers. They rely on technology from the U.S.'s IBM and equipment from the Netherlands ASML, which essentially means they have not been able to shake off their foreign dependence. In contrast, China is not only engaged in chip manufacturing but also in the entire industry chain, including materials and equipment. Companies like Nora Technology are already providing some domestic equipment. This complete chain independence is true security. The U.S. is now in a dilemma. On one hand, it wants to restrict the development of China's semiconductor industry through bans, while on the other, its own companies are suffering huge losses. The U.S. semiconductor self-sufficiency rate is only 35%. The bans have forced companies to procure from third countries, causing costs to soar by 20% to 30%. The U.S. Treasury Secretary has even started calling for the removal of some tariffs, which shows that this technological decoupling is also very damaging to the U.S. itself. China, on the other hand, 
has cleverly adopted a balanced strategy, focusing on self-sufficiency in key areas while continuing to import in non-critical areas, ensuring both security and an open approach to development.